The Shark-Headed Bear Thing, Chapter 9. They had crashed down into a narrow cave. At least, it had probably been narrow to begin with, but now that a large part of the ceiling and walls had fallen in, it was quite a bit wider. Ben heaved himself out from beneath a pile of dirt, just as Paradise untangled herself from a knot of roots and vines. They looked around for Wesley and eventually spotted a pair of feet poking up from a mound of muck. Taking a leg each, they pulled until he popped free. Wesley spat out a mouthful of soil and wiped his filthy face on his sleeve. <coughs> I was going to suggest we tried to find an entrance, he spluttered. <coughs> ben pointed up to the hole in the ceiling. Found one, he said proudly. Shh, he's paradise. Listen. They listened. The cave stretched out to their left and right like a passageway through the earth. From along the tunnel on their left, Ben could hear the low growling of something monstrous. Hi. I can't hear a thing, Wesley announced. His voice bounced along the passageway in both directions. Paradise gestured for him to be quiet. You've got mud in your ears, Ben said, pointing to the side of Wesley's head. Digging a pinky finger in each ear, Wesley scooped out some of the compacted dirt. The sound of the growling reached him immediately. He listened for a moment, nodded once, then tried to pack his ears with soil again. Let's go, Ben said, drawing his sword and creeping along the passageway. What, towards the terrifying monster noise? Wesley whimpered. Are you mad? If the monster's this way, that's where we'll find the mare, Ben replied. If he hasn't been eaten already, Wesley said, Paradise shot him one of her glares. <clears throat> Which he definitely won't have been, Wesley added quickly. As they made their way along the tunnel, a reddish glow began to flicker and dance along the stone walls. They tiptoed on, the growling sounds growing louder around them. At last, they found themselves at the entrance to a much wider cave. A blast of heat hit Ben in the face, pushing him back into the passageway. Stealing himself, he peeped his head out again. A river of slow-moving lava oozed through the cave, winding along a deep trench in the rocky floor. Ben managed a quick glance around the cavern before the heat forced him to draw back again. No one there, he said. Paradise touched her fingers to her forehead. There's another tunnel on the side of the lava. The monster's down there somewhere. And the mayor? Ben asked. I'm... I'm not sure. I'm not picking him up. Uh, guys, said Wesley. There's a bridge, Ben said, glancing out into the cave again. Not another one, Paradise groaned. This one's made of stone, Ben assured her. It'll be fine. You said that last time, she reminded him. Guys, squeaked Wesley. I think, I think we should hurry. Ben turned. No, we can't hurry. We might slip and... That was when Ben noticed the shape moving along the corridor in their direction. It was a big, scary-looking shape, but despite its size, it was moving really quite quickly indeed. Twin rows of sharp teeth glinted in the glow of the lava. The roar of the shark-headed bear thing shook the walls of the tunnel, threatening to bring more of the roof down on their heads. Back at Paradise's village, Ben had only caught a quick glimpse of the creature. Here, in the narrow passageway, with it racing toward them, it looked bigger and scarier than, than anything he had ever set his eyes on. He held his wooden sword out in front of him, trying his best to keep it from wobbling. What are we going to do? asked Paradise, stepping behind him. Die horribly, Wesley whimpered. Ben! Paradise said. The floor was vibrating, with the thunder of the approaching bear thing, each footstep booming along the corridor. Ben stared. He always dreamed of fighting monsters one day. But this one was so big and so terrifying. And Ben, Paradise said, thumping him on the arm. He jolted, as if woken from a dream. The monster was 15 metres away now and getting closer with each bound. Come on, you fight monsters all the time. What do we do? Paradise demanded. Twelve metres. Flecks of jewel trailed from the thing's gaping jaws. Ben shook his head. I don't, he said, his voice coming out as a hoarse whisper. I've never, I've never thought any, I've never fought anything before. I made it all up. Nine metres. Ben saw himself reflected in the creature's dark, dead eyes. 
Ha! I knew it! Paradise cried. All that stuff about being a great monster hunter, I knew it wasn't true. You said, you said, you say it's like a good thing, Wesley said. What do we do? Six metres. The thing's muscular body tensed, preparing to make one final fatal leap. Run! Ben yelped, shoving Paradise and Wesley out of the passageway and into the wider cave. The heat hit them like a wave of fire, scorching their throats and stinging their eyes. They staggered blindly toward the bridge, just as a snarling ball of rage exploded within the passageway, its fluffy bunny tail twitching with fury. The shark-headed bear thing skidded on the smooth stone. For one short but happy moment, Ben thought it was going to plunge into the fiery lake, but then it found its balance and turned, teeth snapping towards them. There was no way they could all outrun it. No chance they could all escape. The picture in the book had made the bear thing seem terrifying. Out in the real world, it was much worse. Its dense muscles rippled beneath its thick fur. Its clawed claws scraped like knife blades against the rocky floor and dark saliva dribbled down its teeth but it was the size of it that was the most terrifying thing of all. Even hunched over on all fours, as it was now, it was almost three times as tall as Ben. The leathery skin of its shark head had rustled softly as it turned its dark eyes Ben's way. I, I can't fight this thing, Ben said. Listen to me, said Paradise sharply. It doesn't matter that you've never fought monsters before. What matters is that you can fight one now. And you can. I know you can. How? Because I went looking for a brave warrior who could stop this thing and I found you, she said. And I always find what I'm looking for, Ben. Always. If you couldn't stop it, I wouldn't have found you. You can do this. You're the only one who can. Ben stared at her as her words sunk in. The shark-headed bear thing advanced, its huge paws padding across the floor. Go, Ben said, turning to it. I'll hold it back. What do you intend to do? Let it eat you, Wesley squeaked. That'll barely buy us two minutes. Just go. Find the mare. I can stop it, Ben said, hoping only he could hear the tremble in his voice. You can do this, Paradise reminded him. She slapped him on the arm. Don't you dare die. She and Wesley hurried in the direction of the other passageway and Ben locked eyes with the monster. You want to eat us? I'm warning you. You'll have to get through this, he said, and he held up his sword. Or, to be more accurate, he held up just the handle of the sword. The rest of it caught fire and turned to ash when he wasn't looking. Ben stared at the smouldering remains of his wooden weapon, then back at the bear thing. With his sword gone, Ben was defenseless. Unless... The gauntlet! He balled his fingers together, forming a metal fist. He brought it up sharply, hoping the glove's magic would do its stuff. With a clank, the gauntlet rattled harmlessly against the bear thing's jaw, and a spasm of pain shot through Ben's fingers and all the way up to his elbow. All right, Ben said, pinning his aching hand beneath his armpit. How about we call it a draw? And with that, the monster lunged.